Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, we did not make a video last week, so I've been making one every week since we started a few months ago. But last week was a little chaotic and it was a lot of the same stuff that you've seen before, kind of repeated. Uh, we did get our seventh peas planted a couple of days ago. So we've only got one more planting of those. The little melons that we planted and our sweet potatoes that we transplanted are taking off pretty good. We're gonna be doing some cultivation on those hopefully this week. So we've been getting a little bit of rain. It's actually raining some today, which is gonna be good for them. We did have to water them a couple more times. So that's kind of the update from last week. We did some hoeing and we started picking some things and tomorrow, June the 14th, is gonna be the first day that we will open here at our produce stand. So it's kind of a big day for us. We've been picking a little bit of stuff and just I've been selling it to some of the wholesale guys, but we've got enough now that we can open up to the public. So a lot of the videos this summer probably will be here at the shop where we sell everything because that's where I am most of the time. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I, the harvest is interesting, I'm sure, for a lot of folks, but a lot of times I'm not out there. So we'll have to see. And uh, I'll try to get you some, some videos, but a lot of times it will be here when we're loading people and loading trucks and selling to the general public and those kind of things. So that's where we are right now. And I'll give you a little tour and show you a few things and it's not fancy but uh, we make it work and uh, nobody complains too much so it must be okay all right this is our big cover over our back door to our shop you can hear the rain right now it's raining when we're pulling up and unloading you know we'll make the circle drive coming this way and pull our trucks and our trailers to come up here and unload it of course, that's one of the most important pieces of equipment I got is a forklift right there. We couldn't hardly operate without, without that. All right, this is the back door to my shop. We just take my farm shop and we turn it into a retail place in the front. And the back half is where we box and sort and grade everything. So you'll kind of see what all this is for later. That's for our peas. You know, we'll keep pallets of empty boxes. My building next door is where we keep all of our, our boxes and we'll bring one over one pallet at a time. We'll do a lot of our grading right here. Boxing and grading and sorting. We'll stack them on pallets. And then this is kind of the back side of our retail place here. Those doors are open front door that's where the individual retail people will come in and out on the front door they'll park right out there across the road Got a small walk-in cooler that we keep here in the front you know we've got shelves we can put a lot of stuff in here when everybody gets ready to pay they come and check out right here at the cash register at the window and then, like I said, those are the doors. They'll be open. They'll leave from there. This is kind of the view when you walk in the front door. Of course, it'll look a little different when we get it full of stuff. My shop area over here, you know, where we keep tools. And I got tool room back here and all that. But So it's not, you know, completely set up like a farm market because it's still our shop. But anyway, it works pretty good, though. Coolers back here under the shed, they're outside. We keep them in the back. You know, we've got a pretty big walk in cooler. We can put a lot of stuff and stack it up in here. Keep it at 
probably about 36 to 38 degrees. Another cooler, we just keep it 60 to 65 with the roll up door. We'll keep stuff that doesn't need to be that cold in there. These are some of the things we've got ready for tomorrow. You know, we box up these little pickling cucumbers, slicing cucumbers, yellow squash here. We always plant the straight neck, not the crook neck. Peaches ready to go. We'll put them in our baskets for the retail people in the front. It's these same boxes, they, uh, they'll be different. Each pallet will be different, different brand. We get them uh, once used from a big tomato processor. And so they all say tomatoes, but we use them for everything. We use them for all of what I just showed you. We use them for sweet potatoes, tomatoes, everything. Some tomatoes we got ready for tomorrow for our baskets. I mean, they're not all the way right, but that's usually about how we pick them like that. And they'll, they'll turn right pretty fast. You know, I have this sign put up here a few years ago says my God shall supply all your needs Philippians 419 I keep it hanging under the window right here and I don't really do it for everybody else although that's fine if they want to see it and read it that's great but I do it for me so I can look at it all day because this spot standing right here on the floor is kind of signifying our income for the year because this is where everybody pays so I keep that right there to remind me that good or bad God's gonna take care of us all right here's where we keep boxes in here see we've got them double stacked all the way to the roof Anyway, you can see it's a lot of boxes. We get them in the winter time and then we use these wood bins. We use these when we're picking watermelons and cantaloupes and all that. But all these are mostly used for sweet potatoes. When we get ready to do our pea sheller, I'll give you a little explanation on that, but I'll wait till it gets time to be used and you can kind of understand it better when you see it happening. All right, this is our corn trailer that we pick our corn in. We put them in these crates and they're counted. We sell everything in 50 count sacks or a dozen count sacks, but we actually put 52 in the 50 count sacks and 13 in the dozen sacks. I'm sure we have made a mistake over the years, but that's what we try to do. So each crate has 26 ears of corn. So when you're putting a big sack, you dump two crates into one sack, you don't have to count them because they've already been counted. When you're making up little sacks, you get two little sacks out of one crate and you count them and put them in there. So that's how we do it. Doesn't get much better than that right there. That's Remedy is a variety, yellow and white, bi-colored. You know, it's not many, but it's a few. <clears throat> That's the first cantaloupes, too, of the season. Uh, we'll pick many, many, many cantaloupes every day once they get going. But first ones. All of our corn that goes in bags of a dozen come in these nice little mesh bags right here. Morning, it's June the 14th. This is the first day we're opening at our produce stand. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I've got it set up with the produce in there. Yesterday I kind of showed you with the tables were empty, but I'm gonna show you how we have it set up. These are our peppers, jalapenos, cubanelle, bell peppers. We'll have okra here. I don't have it today, but it's just getting started. We'll have some eggplant here. Not ready yet. Slicing cucumbers. 
We sell our yellow squash in baskets. We sell our pickling cucumbers in baskets. We've got just a few cantaloupes. Those are the first ones of the year. And then we sell our peaches in baskets. We sell our tomatoes in baskets. Over here against this wall, we'll have our watermelons in bins. Whenever they get ready, we'll bring them in, set them up there. These are some of the things that are not ready yet that we'll have coming soon. All right, we'll keep our sweet corn in the coolers, the little sacks and the big sacks. We don't leave it sitting out. And then whenever we get to shelling our purple hull peas, we'll shell them and bag them up and keep them in the coolers also. So that's kind of our setup. The guys that are buying wholesale, when they come, they pull around through the circle drive behind the buildings and park back here, and that's where we load them. And I told you we use boxes, so we box up everything. Like this is squash, so pickling cucumbers here. People can buy not only in baskets, but they can buy, you know, larger quantities in these boxes too. So we sell, of course, the people that are reselling buy everything in the boxes, and, but some of the individual people will buy it in boxes too if they want to get a lot of weight. You know, the tomatoes, peaches, all available in boxes. That's why we have to grade them out because we have to have a number one grade on a box if somebody's wanting to buy a box. They want to know they're getting the best or we do a number two grade you know if they want to use them for canning or if it doesn't matter and they're going to cut them up so we separate everything all right i told you we were going to do some cultivation we we're doing it on the little melons and the sweet potatoes i'm on the sweet potatoes right now and we're plowing them with a rolling cultivator. I've got a two row that I use just for the potatoes. And the reason I use a two row is we plant the potatoes with the two row. Even though the potato rows are set up on an eight row with guidance, we don't have a guidance on the tractor that we use to plant the potatoes. So anyway, I just use a two row cultivator on the potatoes because we use a two-row planter. So, I'm gonna give you a little video behind me and let you see it. All right, you can see it. Some of the slips are not all the same size. Uh, some of them kind of get barely covered up. As long as they've got a leaf or two sticking out, they'll be fine. If it does completely cover up some of the smaller ones, it might delay them a little bit, but We've got some little weeds coming up. We've had regular rainfall the last uh, week or more. And so we're gonna plow them with this. And then I may come back one more time with the A-row furrow plow that we use and kind of plow it and bury anything that's coming up again once the potatoes are a little bit bigger, maybe two weeks, maybe, something like that. We're gonna put out our nitrogen on the potatoes next week. And then we can put out a pre-emerge over the top too, about 21 days after planting. And so we'll do that coming up maybe in another 10 days or so. These slips are not the same size as sometimes they burn off after you plant them. Uh, the slips were pretty tall when we got them. They were good and healthy, but sometimes when it's hot, they'll burn off and then Put on a new leaf so the ones that burn off are shorter i mean they've already greened up and put on new leaves but the one that didn't they're taller some of them have even kind of fallen over and starting to spread out so we've got a little bit of size difference in the slips so that's why some of the potatoes are getting uh, mostly covered up by the dirt but it's soft dirt they should push on through. just like everything else we do the herbicide is very limited but we do have the option of putting the pre-emergent over the top. You're supposed to wait about 21 days after planting. We use dual magnum atulachlor, and it will get a lot of the stuff that has not come up yet, but you need it as clean as possible when you put it out. It's not gonna hurt the potatoes spraying over the top. 
So that's why we're plowing now, and we'll come back and plow with that furrow plow. You know, it's not going to damage the vines really. This is a rolling cultivator, and so once the vines start spreading out, you don't want to do that because you're going to chop them off. But with that middle buster furrow plow, even if the vines have run out a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything, and I'll show you that whenever we get to it. All right, we're also plowing our melons with the same type cultivator, except we've got a one row rolling cultivator, the same everything as what I'm doing now, but it's just a one row. We've got it hooked on the Kubota. You can see how it's doing just to where the melons are. And I'm gonna come back in a couple of days and I'm gonna do these skips here with the hood one more time before those melons start running out. Now I know they look small now, but it won't take them long to start spreading out. And that hood is pretty close there to that row, so I need to, to do it pretty soon. So it's pretty clean in the middles there, but we want to put another layer of pre-emergent down and we'll put some Liberty in there with it, glufosinate to get any tiny little thing that's coming up. But so far everything looks pretty good here. I don't know if you can see the Kubota way down on the other end, but just do it one row at a time. All right, while I've got the two-row cultivator hooked up and I'm right here beside these peas, I'm going to go ahead and plow them. Even though I'm only doing two rows at a time, it'll take me twice as long, but I'm already here, so we're going to do it. These are pea planting number five. You can kind of see the stage growth that they're in. I mentioned in one of the videos, uh, a while back that on these rolling cultivators you know you don't want to do it when the crops are too big if the gangs are running close because they'll damage the roots well the way we have this two row plow set up is it is kind of throwing up a, a bed at the same time so it's it's really not too close so anyway i didn't know if anybody would have remembered that or not i just thought i'd throw that in I don't know if you can see the weeds in the middles, but definitely needs plowing. Most of the weeds in this field right here is purslane. That stuff is spreads like wildfire. Well, not long after we got through cultivating the sweet potatoes and finished up for the day, that was Thursday. We had a massive storm in Northwest Louisiana, started in East Texas. And it did major destruction. If you're watching this and you live, you know, close to where we are, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. It put a serious hurt on the whole power grid and the transmission line, substations, everything in our area. And so we have been without power for a while. And it just came back on here at the shop late Saturday night. It's spotty though. I still don't have it at my house and there's lots of people that are out. So we were actually open Friday and Saturday at our produce stand with no power. And that was not fun either. They had excessive heat warnings issued for Friday and Saturday. Saturday was about as hot as it can get. And in fact, I have a friend that works for the National Weather Service that said that's the highest heat index he's ever seen here in Northwest, Northwest Louisiana. I think he said it got to 117. So no power, extra heat, storms, it doesn't make for a good combination, but I hope all that's over. So I say all that to say, I'm gonna wrap up the video and start over. I was planning on getting y'all some good video of us being open 
you know, to the public and kind of, you know, getting a taste of what goes on here at the beginning. You know, we don't have all of our crops ready, so we're not as busy as we will be later. But anyway, that all got scratched. So hopefully it's over. We've gotten storms pretty much every day though. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We had a little bit of hail. I hope it's not enough to do any damage. Uh, I haven't looked everywhere yet because it was only a few hours ago. The sun's out now and it's hot, but it was small. And so I'm hoping it's, it's not gonna be enough to do any damage. So anyway, let's just start fresh with a new video and go from there. So see y'all next time.